Thank you. Hi, I'm Peter Groves Williams. I'm a technical specialist with SNOMED International, and this session will be an introduction to SNOMED with Fire. I think I want to convey three things today. Firstly, why SNOMED is great, how best to use it together with Fire, and how that's going to help make your applications awesome and also safe, fit for purpose, and a bunch of other good stuff. So here's what we're going to look at today. It's pretty much a game of two halves, and I I said to Marco, who's moderating, that we could maybe take questions about SNOMED after the first half, and then uh, at the end, we'll take any mop-up questions about FIRE. So firstly, we'll look at SNOMED, what it is and how it works, and then we'll move over to look at FIRE. Now, Jim Steelgrave gave, gave great coverage of terminology resources on Monday, so I'm really just going to focus on some aspects of FIRE that are specific to features of SNOMED CT. I'll also mention our Snowstorm terminology server, which is free to use. That's available on GitHub. And finally, talk about how HL7 and SNOMED International got together to form a working group several years ago, which, of course, we had to name SNOMED on fire. So I'll talk about the work we do there and invite you to join that group if you're interested. SNOMED CT, clinical terms, that's what the CT stands for, is the most comprehensive and precise clinical terminology in the world. SNOMED CT is first and foremost an ontology, as opposed to a classification. And that means that it's a set of concepts and categories in a subject area or domain that show their properties and the relationships between those concepts. SNOMED is a poly hierarchy. You could call it a directed acyclic graph if you want to hold your own against computer scientists. Each concept can have many parents. Each concept can be many types of things at the same time. So it's not a classification system like ICD, where a code can only build, belong in one particular bucket. Classifications like that are really good for statistical reporting. If you can only put a code in a single bucket, then your numbers will always add up to 100%. But it doesn't represent real world complexity like concept like acute renal failure due to procedure. Now, is that a disorder of the kidneys or is it potentially an indication of medical malpractice? Well, it's both at the same time. And something I love as a developer is that SNOMED is self-describing. Most things in SNOMED, the different types of descriptions, the attribute types, the structure of the reference sets themselves are all described using SNOMED codes. Why is SNOMED great? I showed my wife the first draft of the slide when it was eight bullet points, full sentences. Death by PowerPoint, she exclaimed and told me to concentrate on what makes SNOMED stand out from other products and cut it down to three bullet points. I always listen to my wife's advice, so I'll stick, skip over the extendable multilingual support, the robust versioning mechanism, and unambiguous clarity, which left me with uh, the comprehensive scope. SNOMED CT contains concepts describing disorders, anatomy, medicines, procedures, organisms, substances. So there's the potential to record everything you need in a single health record with a single terminology. It's computable for analytics and decision-making, for example, pharmacovigilance. Really interesting presentation I saw a year or so ago was about how drug trials, obviously extremely costly to set up. But once a drug is in circulation, if you're capturing sufficient detail in an electronic medical record, you can work out exactly how that drug is behaving across maybe a million patients with every combination of age, weight, pre-existing conditions, and interactions with other drugs available to be analyzed. And the cost of that would just be collecting the data you were hopefully going to collect anyway. The last point, variable granularity, only really dawned on me recently because I always thought of SNOMED as being the most granular, the most specific terminology. But in fact, it can be used at whatever level of detail you need. For decision support, for example, you want to know exactly what condition a patient has, the medicines they've been given and so on. But then for population level reporting, you might want to do that analysis far more generally, say patients with lung conditions. So you can take that fine grained detail in the underlying data and look at it with a far more abstract view whatever level of detail your use case calls for. So I also wasn't going to mention post-coordination, which allows systems to create new concepts at runtime. And something that's really interesting in FHIR is wherever you see a slot for SNOMED code, you could, in theory, equally pass one that you've just created, fully modeled as a SNOMED expression. Similarly, I won't be mentioning the rules about uh, concepts that you put together in post-coordination, which are specified by a machine-readable concept model. So any new concept you might create will fit into the right place in the rest of the hierarchy. So I didn't mention those things and there are only three bullet points on the screen. 
very quick history of SNOMED CT. It was formed as the amalgamation of two systems, SNOMED RT from the College of American Pathologists and the Reed coding system developed by James Reed starting in 1986 uh, by the NHS in the UK, which evolved into CTV3 around the time of SNOMED RT in 2001. And at that time, the NHS and the CAP realized that maintaining the terminology is a very time consuming and therefore expensive business, and it's a difficult thing to do. So in 2007, nine charter member countries came together to bring the International Health Terminology Standards Development Organization into being and transfer the intellectual property and responsibility for SNOMED CT to that organization. And that's roughly how things have been operating since then except that in 2017 we changed the name to SNOMED International because nobody outside of the organization could say IHTSDO. And today I think we're at 70, sorry, 38 member countries. You can read more about this history on Wikipedia. The main point I made, wanted to make in this slide is that while SNOMED has existed in some form since the 60s, it continues to evolve as a product. In July 2018, for a recent example, we switched from expressing relationships in flat triple format to do so in using web ontology language, OWL, which lets us use additional axioms and general concept inclusions and all that description logic goodness. Right, let's look at the logical structure of SNOMED CT. This diagram usually comes much later in presentations about SNOMED, but I thought these guys are developers, they'll want to see the class diagram. Everything in SNOMED is a type of component. They all have identifiers, uh, unique identifiers at that, get an updated effective time whenever they change, and they belong in a particular module. Every component also has a Boolean active flag. No published component is ever deleted. We just mark them as inactive. A component as a class is abstract in nature. Our primary class is the concept, and I don't know if you can quite see the detail here, but every concept must have at least two descriptions and at least one relationship saying what it is. One exception to that is the root concept, SNOMED CT concept, which has no parents. So for the next three slides, we'll look at each of those in turn, starting with the concept. Concepts have unique numeric identifiers, up to 18 digits in length, and that's linked to a fully specified name, or FSN, which doesn't change. Well, the FSN could be clarified, have an acronym inside it accidentally, which we expand out, or some minimal tweak. But if we wanted to change it enough so that the meaning were to change, then the concept would instead have to be inactivated and a new one created. The meaning of the concept cannot change over time. Descriptions. Each description has its own identifier, which is also a SNOMED code or SCTID, as well as a single concept identifier and versioning information. And that versioning is independent of the concepts version that it belongs to. SNOMED's release format specifies the UTF-8 character set, so we can handle a whole bunch of diacritical marks, umlauts, acutes, sedillas, circumflexes, so we're ready to handle Hindu, Korean, Arabic, and traditional Chinese medicine. There are three different types of descriptions. A description could be an FSN, fully specified name, a synonym, uh, which has a limit of 255 characters, or a text definition, which has a limit of 4K but a concept must have at least an FSN and a preferred term. The preferred term in any given dialect is expressed by a language reference set, and we'll come to those later. FSNs must be unique in a given language across all active SNOMED concepts. The FSN includes a semantic tag, which you can see the thing in brackets at the top there, which is used to disambiguate. It tells you what major hierarchy a concept is in. The one exception to this is drug eluting stents, which I think are unique in that they belong in two different major hierarchies at the same time. They're both medicinal products and physical objects. So when you add up the number of concepts in each major hierarchy and you come up with six more concepts than exist in all of SNOMED CT, that is why. And that situation has tripped me up more times than I'd care to admit to anyone. I should say that synonyms by contrast do not need to be unique. For example, fundus, which is the part of an anatomical structure opposite an opening, exists in the stomach, the eye, uterus, gallbladder, and physicians in each of those spe specialties all call uh, that part of that structure a fundus. So the FSM will be unique, but the synonym may exist elsewhere in SNOMED. Relationships. Each concept is associated with other concepts by a set of relationships. The relationships express defining characteristics of a concept, and again, they're components, so they have unique identifiers and versioning information. Relationships have two main flavors. Although they look identical, 
there's no distinction made between them in the release format. So they can be either an isa, which means they're set in the hierarchy, or they're about some property of the concept, in which case we call that an attribute. There's no limit on the number of attributes a concept can have. If you say concept B is a child of concept A, then concept B will inherit all the attributes of A. I also need to mention relationship grouping. So we might have a condition which features boils appearing on your face and inflammation of the foot. To make it clear, we'd group the relationship about the boils with the relationship that says the finding site is face. Otherwise, it's not clear if you've got boils on your face or your foot and your doctor have had no idea what your condition you've got. I think probably what you should take from that is that I have no medical training beyond for basic first aid. So let's look at what that does to the hierarchy. And uh, an example here is appendectomy. Hopefully you can read this. There's a lot to fit into one slide. And if you can't, I'm just hoping to convey a sense of a general sense of the le levels of abstraction in SNOMED from the most specific to the most general. And you can choose what level uh, of granularity to work at depending on your use case. So starting with those two relationships at the bottom of the screen, appendectomy is a operation on appendix, and it also is a partial excision of large intestine. We can then move on to look further up the hierarchy, and we see that operation on appendix is a type of procedure on appendix, and similarly that partial excision of large intestine is a subtype of large intestine excision. And so on, we're building further up the hierarchy, bringing in more general concepts, and we get to the concept procedure, which is the very general concept under which appendectomy and all other procedures sit in SNOMED CT. And then finally to the concept SNOMED CT concept itself, which is the most general concept in SNOMED, also known as the root concept. So this is what appendectomy looks like in a model diagram. And there's all sorts of detail in here you'll learn about if you take one of our foundation courses, but just to pick out a couple of things. Although appendectomy is the preferred synonym for this concept, it doesn't appear in the diagram. To be completely unambiguous, the fully specified name is excision of appendix. And you see the semantic tag there clarifying that this is a procedure. Secondly, those three bars, uh, parallel bars in the top circle, indicate that this concept has been marked as sufficiently defined. The effect of that is that any procedure that has these same two attributes grouped together in this way will be inferred to be a type of appendectomy. These inferences are made by a computer program called a classifier, of which there are many on the market. And in SNOMED International, we use ELK and SNOW Rocket. Expression constraint language. I think this is the most powerful thing in SNOMED. When I go to trade shows, I like to annoy salespeople in booths by asking them what they like best about their product. They, they never know. And it, but if they were to ever ask me back in return, I'd say it's ECL. It allows us to specify a subset of SNOMED concepts based on their position in the hierarchy and the presence or absence of a set of attributes, again, potentially grouped and optionally with some specified cardinality. Uh, for example, our use of ECL, we have an internal project in SNOMED International, which has been running for a couple of years now, a quality initiative to improve the modeling consistency of SNOMED. And we used to do cleanup by specifying some smaller sub-hierarchy within SNOMED but now we've completely switched over to specifying our subsets of concepts using ECL. ECL gets used all over the place in SNOMED. It's in our template language, our machine readable concept model, in our reporting platform, in our specification of ref sets or subsets, and we'll see shortly how it can be used directly in FAR value set expansion. Here's an example of some ECL. Reading left to right, I'm saying I want all descendants of medicinal product where there's an attribute type so that would be either has ingredient as a concept or has precise active ingredient and I want the attribute value to be caffeine. Fully specified names are entirely optional in ECL if you're a computer but those of us who can't memorize 350,000 numbers we like to have them in there. Moving on slightly to show off the logical operators here I'm saying I want all these concepts I selected on the last side and then I want the intersection of that with all the members of some subset. We'll see when we start talking about fire that the member of operator, the hat symbol on the bottom line, allows you to reuse existing published SNOMED artifacts and expose them very quickly as fire value sets. Reference sets. Well, here there are three major types of reference set, although there are 21 different sorts, which you can, in total, which you can read about in the SNOMED technical implementation guide, which is in uh, the document library on our website. 
A simple reference set is the same idea as a subset or value set. Simple maps get used for all sorts of things. Most importantly, language reference sets and our historic replacement mechanisms. And finally, when a simple map won't cut it, there are complex maps. Uh, for example, if we're mapping to ICD-10, when there are extra considerations at runtime. Like, for example, it might make a difference to the mapping if a patient is male or female, which generally SNOMED doesn't worry about, well, not in the disorder hierarchy anyway. Reference sets are also used to describe SNOMED CT structure. For example, we have a reference set to describe the shape of reference sets themselves, our dependencies between modules and our description formats. So introducing Snowstorm. SNOMED International used a commercial terminology server internally for many years before a colleague of mine, Kai Cooley, developed a replacement based on Java Spring and Elasticsearch. And as with all our software, we've made that open source and it's available for you to use on GitHub. It's not a commercial product, although we do try to react quickly to issues raised on GitHub, and it only supports SNOMED CT as a terminology. So Snowstorm was written primarily to serve the internal needs of SNOMED International, although obviously we've opened it up to the rest of the world. It provides the backend data store and business rules engine for a lot of our applications. Here you can see our authoring platform that the clinical terminologists use to maintain the ontology. And here's a shot of our public browser, which lets you dive into the international edition, as well as a number of country editions. We get a lot of people trying to obtain all of SNOMED by hitting this API with some sort of automated method. So the API is rate limited. And we specifically state that the instance that we're hosting should not be used as part of anyone else's production system, although they'd be welcome to run up their own instance on their own hardware, do whatever they like with it. It's worth noting there, um, at the middle top right of the screen, the addition last year of an expression constraint tab that lets you try a TCL. We're hoping to enhance that with some sort of auto-completion syntax checking in the near future. Right, that concludes what I wanted to say about an introduction to SNOMED CT. Um, Marco, are there any questions come up in that, in that half of the presentation to answer? Yes, we have, um, we have two questions uh, asked. Uh, the first one, um, is it possible to define a fire value set with required free coordinated codes? Question by Reese Adamson. Yes, we are completely going to use pre-coordinated uh, codes in the examples I've given today, so you'll see that. Post-coordination, right. post-coordination by contrast is, sorry, that's my front door, though, is, uh, it's really cool. It's the most powerful thing you know, that's going, and when you see it, you'll, you'll be blown away by it. It's so powerful, but it is difficult to use. There are a limited number of people who could handle it, and we've not, for example, got support for ourselves internally if you were to try and define a value set on the fly using post-coordination. And that is something that SNOMED International is moving into this year. Thank you for that. What was the next question? And um, the other question is by Korsol. How straightforward or responsive is the, res is the process to request code or relationship and aliases in SNOMED? That is a great question. Generally, the way to do that is to go through your country, your member country. So anyone in, say, England would apply to the NHS, to the, um, the digital, digital support lab they've got there. And if that concept was applicable internationally, if two or more countries wanted to use it, then it might exist in uh, the UK edition first and then be promoted up. SNOMED International releases their product every six months, so it would very much depend on where you were in that cycle. If you were to put a concept in halfway through an authoring cycle, it might appear for you three months later. There is an intention to release SNOMED um, International more frequently in the future. Thank you for those. Okay. Are there any further questions in that time? Last question, is Snowstorm supporting the fire terminology services? Yes, and that is exactly what we're gonna talk, talk about next. I thought so. <laughs> <laughs> okay, you have the floor again. Okay, thank you. So I'll press on and uh, I'm going to look at FHIR and specifically in relation to using SNOMED. So here are the main FHIR terminology resources we're going to look at today and each one has a number of operations that can be performed. So we'll work through each of these in turn and as I say I'll try to avoid repeating too much material from other terminology sessions and just focus on the particulars of using them with SNOMED CT. Code system instances. This is a, so to answer the question, yes, we have a FHIR API. Uh, we took the Snowstorm terminology server and we added uh, a happy layer to it. 
And really that's just doing a, a mapping between our internal structures and uh, the fire uh, 4.0 4 structures uh, when they come out. So this is a recent addition to Snowstorm. And as with other resources, you just have a URL ending with the name of the resource and you get back a list of the ones available. And you can filter on any of the fields that come back. In the examples here, a particular uh, release date or publisher has been filtered for. The system identifiers that come back are implementation dependent. So they vary from terminology server to uh, one to another. So what we decided to do with Snowstorm was just pick out the meaningful identifiers from the URI. So we state the module identifier and the effective date together with uh, just the letters SCT to give it some context so it's not just random numbers. So these objects don't exist as fire code system objects in the Elasticsearch data store that Snowstorm sits on top of. What happens is that we query the additions of SNOMED internally in Snowstorm and then map them to happy data structures. Code system lookup operation. Here we're saying, I've got this SNOMED code, tell me more about it. An example, the first example, specifying the URI for SNOMED CT, and we'll get back a default set of properties. So let's click on that. Uh, and there we see COVID-19 as a concept. We've got an effective time that came out in January, 2020. Uh, we decided to put the module ID as a default, and then you get all the, what FIRE calls designations, we would call those descriptions in SNOMED. There we are. In example two, I've specified the full URI for a particular version. And if we go back to those heady carefree days of last summer and the July 2019 edition, we'll see that the concept for COVID-19 is not found. Not found exception. So instead of the version parameter here, I could have used the system ID of the code system and called the instance method, which is basically the same thing with the uh, code system instance in the URL, and then you don't need the version parameter. And if we specify the module of some country extension, then we'd see all the de designations, the translated terms for the concept in that country, as well as English. In example three, the FAR specification has a page listing particular properties that can be requested on SNOMED concepts. Uh, you could request the module ID, whether the concept is sufficiently defined in a logical sense. But the most interesting property is the normal form, which is how you access the concept model, the attributes in FAR. So let's see what that looks like when it comes back. That's pretty dense, isn't it? Uh, this is a syntax called SNOMED Compositional Grammar. And I've chosen a complex example here, a 500 milligram paracetamol tablet to show off just how much there could be in there. But a SNOMED concept could equally be as simple as just saying what the parent is and nothing else. And the graph would end up being a primitive leaf node at that point. Code system validate. Now, it might be that in receiving some fire resource, we come across a code we haven't seen before, and we want to say, is this even a valid SNOMED code? And we use code system validate for that. So in the first example there, we're using a coding, which when you express it as a string in a URL, is done using the code system URI, followed by a pipe, followed by the code itself. So the code system's in red and the code is in green. Now it's possible, especially if there's been some natural language processing going on, that we've ended up with a code that's slightly different from what the physician originally intended. So it's important to also validate the term that was given. In this case, we'd get a response back saying, yes, I recognize the code, but that's not the term we prefer to use for it. And the actual preferred term for the concept will be supplied. And that's an overall failure. If you specify a wrong description, then it's an overall fail. If you supply the call with one of the other synonyms, you'd get back overall success. But again, the preferred term would be given back to you. So let's click through on that. I said nausea, but that display term is not recognized. You should have said hangover. So you've got a false there. All right, subsumption is checking whether one concept is a type of another concept. In the hierarchy, is it underneath a descendant of the first concept? And this is where we really see the power of SNOMED's poly hierarchy, especially for analytics. Let's say, for example, I want to find patient cohorts with some general sort of condition. Traditionally, to find those, I would need to know every specific type of condi condition that a doctor might have entered into the patient's notes. 
So let's say I had a decision support system and I wanted to arrange a follow-up visit with any patients with diabetes. And I received the medical record for a patient with some condition. And I want to check, is that a type of B, diabetes? Is code A a type of code B? And those are the codes for bronze diabetes. And we're saying, is that a type of diabetes mellitus? It turns out the bronze diabetes is not a type of diabetes. It's not even a disorder of the endocrine system. How we laughed that day when we found that out. We had no idea. There were no physicians in the te technology team in uh, Snowden International. So we'll click through on that. And it says, A is not subsumed by B. Value set instances, that's very straightforward. As with all resources, we give the name of the resource and we get a list of the available ones back. Um, a feature we've implemented in Snowstorm since the last time I gave this talk at Dev Days is this search text modifier, um, which is in purple there, saying that I want any value set where the title contains the word condition. By default, if you didn't specify a mo modifier, you would get a starts with match. Something I've personally struggled with in the FAR specification is that there's so much of it that a developer could potentially implement, but there's no obvious roadmap through it of what you'd want to develop first. What's the most important thing? And that, of course, completely depends on your use case. There's no one answer to it. So that's why I find things like FAR Connectathon so valuable, because I offer up a URL of Snowstorm for people to try it and they say, oh, this thing is missing, or is expecting that to come back a bit different. And that's where I get my prioritized to-do list from, and I map out sprints and releases uh, from them. Value set expansion. If you caught any of the terminology talks this week, I think most of you will be happy about how to expand a value set. That is, ask the server to evaluate whatever content or rules the compose element states against a particular instance of the code system, and then list all the codes that satisfy those rules. So instead, I'd like to focus on particular strengths of SNOMED CT in internationalization and multi-language support. You can see here that I've told the server to ignore whatever code system is specified in the value set, and instead expand against the Dutch module. Because I haven't specified an effective date in the URI here, we're going to get back the most recent release and I want the preferred term to come back in Dutch. I'm also going to filter for the word pollen. So if I click through that link, and then scroll down to the compose element so we get to expansion, you'll see that not every concept in the Dutch edition has a translation. So we might choose to specify the parameter, include designations here, and pull back to English where Dutch is not available. Implicit value sets. This is in my mind the coolest feature of FAR. Your applications do not need to predefine and maintain value sets on a FAR terminology server. You can just make one up at runtime. And that's especially useful for creating context specific user interfaces. You can say, I want all the concepts that are a type of this code or members of some existing reference set, or you can go full expression constraint language, ECL. And that's what I've done in this example where I'm looking for all types of procedures with any sort of procedure site, which might be direct or indirect, being performed on any type of heart structure. And if I click that, we'd get 1,600 concepts back from that query, which is far too many to scroll through. So a physician might start typing because they're wanting to do an MRI. So we can add a filter there, which cuts the list down to, I think it comes out as 23. Yeah, when we apply the text filter, we get 23 back and each of them will have an MRI, not necessarily in the FSN. It might be in one of the other synonyms. Value sets validate code. Now we covered validate code as part of the code system resource and it behaves exactly the same here, except we're asking, does this code appear in my value set? And optionally, have I got the correct display term associated with it? Where it's more interesting is that in these dynamically defined, or implicit value sets, the set of concepts, the expansion, could change with each new release of SNOMED and between countries. So we could get a different answer from one day to the next. So if it's important that the contents of a value set should never change, then you will want to upload and store a value set object where the exact addition and effective time of a particular SNOMED release is set in the URI, and then it won't change over time, unless you use that force system version parameter during the expansion. Concept map um, was really intended to let you map from one code system to another. So we'll see here an example of getting the ICD-10 code for a given SNOMED concept. 
So the source code here is in red. I've got the URI for the value set that contains every SNOMED concept. And I'm mapping that to a target, which is the URI for ICD-10. And then in the URL, I've specified the reference set, which contains the SNOMED to ICD-10 map. And there's our ICD-10 code, Q79.8. Because all these maps are just reference set, you can, th these are just reference sets, these maps. So you can use the translate operation to obtain other useful information, like the reason for a concept being inactivated and the code that SNOMED suggests you should use as, re as a replacement in the set. So in the second example, both my source and my target shown here in red, go from SNOMED back to SNOMED. And my concept map identifier specifies the same as historical association ref set. So I'll click that through. And we're saying, when I start with that concept uh, in my code up there, 134811, whatever, then that is, which is inactive, uh, this is the concept to use as a replacement for that. Translate is dangerous to do in reverse. So the only point in this slide is to mention that the ICD maps that SNOMED International publishes are unidirectional. They go from the more granular SNOMED to the more general ICD. And in this example, we're asking to go the other way. And if we run that command, we'll see that Q79.8, as an ICD-10 code, is actually linked to 62 SNOMED codes. So while that might be informative and something you could dig into further, it's not safe to use as a mapping. Let's click back. Yeah, that's a lot of SNOMED codes. So perhaps you could work out a more general SNOMED code of this set, find the, the super parent. But with the, uh, the other categories, uh, which is what this ICD can think of. It's one of the other concepts. You might find that's a bit of a kitchen drawer or a, or a fridge might be a, a better now if it's full of leftovers. It's a bit like taking a, a photo, making it a thumbnail and then trying to blow it back up to A4 size. Once you've lost that fine grained detail, there's no going back to it. So that's why storing and retaining the original SNOMED code is so important. ICD-10 can then be mapped to, which you can do on demand for reporting or billing or whatever your use case is. Now, Jim Steele did a dive into this demo web application on Monday, so I won't spend too much time here, but I'll open it up. And what I would like to do is bring up developers tools. And really what I want to highlight is that a favorite feature of mine uh, of our implicit value set expansion with a text filter applied to it. It keeps the choices offered to the user constrained to the specific domain they're working in. And in this case, we're only interested in, I'll use procedures, not the whole of SNOMED. So let's stick with App Index and the App and boom, there you go. You probably can't read that. I'm not sure how big your screens are. You're very welcome to try that for yourself later. But you see there a call to expand. There's ECL uh, defining the, uh, the value set expansion in the URL and there's a term filter. And also in the drop down top right, shows the industry standard nature of the FAR terminology API. We can just drop in a different terminology server at runtime and we'll get similar results back, not identical because um, Onto server uses the Australian edition by default and we will be using the uh, international one at SNOMED International. So we've got to the last slide here. I just wanted to give a shout out to our SNOMED on Fire working group who have a call every Tuesday at a very reasonable time in the US afternoon. It's a bit closer to bedtime in Europe and it's unfashionably really early on the Wednesday morning in Australia. Um, that group is there for the benefit of SNOMED International member countries and just about anyone interested specifically in using SNOMED and Fire together. We split the discussion into two streams which meet a uh, week about. One stream will focus on server API development and the other one will look at binding the terminology to the information model, so that's profiles and value sets. And we have some great experts there who lead the discussion. So you can find out more about that on our Confluence site, uh, the URL for that's given there, and you're welcome to join those calls anytime. Okay, Marco, did we pick up any more questions in that second half? Yes, we did. Um, first of all, um, a question by Tim Benson. How does it relate to Loink, the snowman? That was on the first. That is a, a long history and a political uh, discussion. Loink is 
uh, an alternative terminology which has a very specific use case and lab results. The political side of that is that SNOMED and LOINC have stayed somewhat separate over the years. We are now working uh, much closer together. Reagan Streif is the uh, organization that produces LOINC, of course, and we are working more closely together. I hope that some useful work um, will come out of that process. As I said, Snowstorm does not work with other terminologies. Uh, there are terminology servers that will work with far more terminologies at the same time. Thank you. Okay. Any we have some questions. Uh, some questions about Snowstorm. Um, does Snowstorm have a permanent public endpoint for testing? It has a read-only endpoint. If you go to browser.ihtsdotools.org, the main SNOMED browser and you bring up the developer tools as I did there, you will see it hit a back end of Snowstorm. So you're welcome to use that on a sort of casual basis um, just to try things out. It is rate limited. You don't want to start running that through any sort of automated process. If you wanted to do that, it is really quick to just uh, clone that repository from Git, spin it up yourself, and it takes under 20 minutes to get a, uh, a version of SNOMED installed on that. So there is a public one, which you're welcome to use. It has limitations and it's very easy to spin up your own one. Next question. Okay. Another question about uh, SNOMED is, um, is there a good front app web UI openly available to use Snowstorm? Well, we use Snowstorm to do an awful lot of things. Uh, we use it for our reference set maintenance. We use it for terminology authoring, the browser. The br I mean, all this software is also open source and available in GitHub, so it very much depends on your use case. Um, if your use case is browsing, then download the Snowbird browser. If you're trying to author terminology, then, um, then those applications are all available as well. In terms of what other people are doing, we tend not to have so much visibility of that. Um, and if you find that someone has done something great, a great front end to Snowstorm, I would love to hear about it. <laughs> I see we've got for a couple more questions. Yeah, I have another question, um, a question from Martin Diaz. If I maintain a local SNOMED extension, is there any tool to update it when a new official SNOMED release is released? Yes, yes. this is all covered in the documentation for Snowstorm. Um, you will do an upgrade and you sort of have to set it up correctly in the first place. You'll put uh, the international version of SNOMED onto your main. It's, it's done in a sort of branching model. So it, international SNOMED will go on main and then your own terminology will branch off from that or you might branch off from your local country edition. And then there are API calls you can make to import the next edition of uh, SNOMED international or, and or your country version. And then you upgrade your own local uh, version after that. So there is documentation and instructions for doing that. We've got one minute left, last one very quickly. Um, I'm just refreshing my screen, but I have no other questions uh, anymore. Uh, nope. Super. Try to refresh it. No, I think we all handled all the questions that's in the Q&A tab. Thank you for that, by the way. Okay, thank you so. for being host today, Mark. I appreciate that. Okay. Thank you very much, everybody, for listening. Thank you very much, Peter.